Hello everyone. I have a question for you. Should we believe everything that is told to us? For example, this scientist claims that his fertilizer can help improve the growth of plants. Now it is wise of the farmer to ask for more proof. So what type of proof can help support the fact that growth is happening. Welcome to BioWorld, where I'm going to explain the importance of graphs in relation to growth. In our STPM syllabus today, I shall be first explaining the different types of growth curves. Altogether, there are three, the absolute growth curve, the absolute growth rate curve and the relative growth rate curve. Let me explain what they are and what are the differences between these curves. To begin, we can start measuring changes in the organism as proof of growth. When we measure, we can use parameters such as height, mass, these two are the most popular parameters for measurement, but we can also measure length, volume, size, or even area. By measuring and recording all these values in a table, we will have sufficient data. Once we have the data and we present this data to the target audience, you will find that they will be very confused because the data is quite meaningless to them unless we are able to convert this data into a graph. What type of graphs are there? We can plot growth curves. There are three types of growth curves. The absolute growth curve, which has five different patterns, which include limited growth pattern, unlimited growth pattern, isometric growth pattern, allometric growth pattern, and intermittent growth patterns. Now, if we don't want to do an absolute growth curve, we can choose to plot an absolute growth rate curve or even a relative growth rate curve but you can clearly see the most direct and simple curve is the absolute growth curve we'll start by plotting the absolute growth curve to plot this curve we first label our axis axis x will be time in this example, days, but there are experiments where the time could be hours or even as big as years. The y-axis will be the parameter of measurement. So in this example, we are using height as the parameter of measurement. Other experiments may use mass or length. After that, we just have to transfer the points in the table to the graph paper and then connect the points to get the absolute growth curve. The shape of the curve is a sigmoid shape. Sigmoid shapes show three stages of growth. The first stage of growth, which we call the lag phase, is when the increase in height is very slow, showing that growth is occurring slowly. The log phase is where the increase in height is happening very quickly, where the growth is now fast. But eventually you see at the constant phase, the increase in height is less, and in fact there is no more increase in height, so that is the constant phase where growth has become limited. So if you wonder 
what is the role of this graph? You find that it shows us overall growth in the plant. Evidence that the plant is growing. But then, how do we know when did it do the most growing? For that, we need to look at the second graph. Now we learn how to plot the absolute growth rate curve. Axis X is still time in days, but axis Y is now growth rate. Centimeter per 10 days. 10 days because our table of data here is measuring at interval of 10 days. To get the value of the growth rate, we actually have to minus the final height with the initial height. The calculation has to be placed in another column where, for example, 20 days into the experiment, the plant grew up to 7 cm. But 10 days earlier, the plant was already 2 cm. So in the gap of 10 days, the plant actually grew 7 minus 2, that is 5 cm. So if we keep on calculating the difference between the final height with the initial height, we will get complete data that we can transfer to plot a graph. Once we connect the dots, we will get a graph that has a bell shape. Bell shaped graph can be divided into two halves. The first half here shows an increasing growth rate. The second half here shows a decreasing growth rate. So the peak of the graph is the point where the plant grew maximum. Beyond this point, the plant is not going to grow as tall anymore. So the conclusion from that is that plants now can be harvested after 60 days because if you keep the plants longer than that, they are not going to be very productive. So this is the advantage of the absolute growth rate curve because it can indicate when the plant had maximum growth. But there is one more curve. Let's have a look. Now we'll learn how to plot the relative growth rate curve. The x-axis is time in days and the y-axis this time is relative growth rate in percentage. How do we get the value for relative growth rate? It follows this formula. We use the growth rate data from the absolute growth rate curve that we calculated earlier and we divide with the final height and multiply by 100% to get the percentage. Let me demonstrate how. Now, we ignore the first data because the value is at zero. We move to the second data. So you see, the growth rate after 20 days was 5 cm. Now, when we want to know the relative growth rate, we take the growth rate value of 5 cm, divide with the final value that was 7 cm, multiply by 100 to get the percentage. So you get 71%. Another example, on day 30, the growth rate was 13 centimeters. We divide with the actual height on day 30 that was 20 centimeters times by 100 and you get 65%. So as you keep on calculating, you have enough data to plot your graph. When we connect the points, you get a declining graph where you can see the initial part of the graph declines very quickly 
these parts show efficient growth rate in the plant but as we reach the bottom of the graph you can see it's started to decline slowly this part is where the growth rate has become inefficient so the purpose of a relative growth rate curve is to help us identify when the growth rate was most efficient let me now summarize the three curves that we studied. The first curve we studied was the absolute growth curve that tells us the overall growth of the plant. The final graph was the relative growth rate curve that helped show us efficiency of growth. The middle one that we learned was the absolute growth rate curve that helped us determine the maximum growth rate so you see the absolute growth rate curve seems to combine the absolute growth curve shape as well as the relative growth rate curve shape so this is like a simple recipe to help you remember the shapes of these curves to help you answer your objective or structure questions I hope this is helpful. Now we have completed growth curves. Let's move on to growth patterns. Growth patterns are connected to growth curves. As mentioned earlier, the absolute growth curve is the one that has a number of different patterns. We can categorize the patterns as limited pattern we find in humans, unlimited pattern we find in big trees, which we call as perennial plants, isometric pattern we find in fish, allometric pattern we find in humans, and intermittent pattern which we find in some insects. The absolute growth rate curve and the relative growth rate curves do not have patterns that are specific like the ones in the absolute growth curve. So let's start with the limited pattern found in humans. The human growth pattern is of limited growth. That is because humans have an expiry date. You can see in this graph at about the age of 70, that is old age, negative growth occurs. During negative growth, the body shuts down and eventually leads to death. This pattern is actually two sigmoids. The first sigmoid includes birth, infancy and childhood, whereas the second sigmoid includes adolescence, adulthood, and old age. A sigmoid curve contains the lag phase, the lock phase, and the constant phase. So you can see during birth, growth is slow. That is the lag phase. Then into infancy, growth is rapid. This will be the lock phase. And in early childhood, growth slows down. This is heading towards the constant phase. But the second sigmoid starts from late childhood, that is the lag phase, and then into adolescence where the human reaches puberty and very rapid growth occurs. So this is the log phase. Then late adolescence into adulthood, where there is minimal growth, will be the constant phase. So this is an example of the limited growth pattern in humans. The opposite of the limited growth pattern is the unlimited growth pattern found in perennial trees. Perennial trees are trees that live forever. They experience multiple seasons such as spring, summer, 
autumn and winter. The growth pattern will appear like this, where it is actually a series of sigmoids. You can see there is a lag phase, then a log phase and a constant phase. The log phase, where the growth rate is very high, happens during summer and spring when there is a lot of sunlight and water available. The constant phase as well as the lag phase occurs during fall and winter when there is less sunlight and less water available. During these seasons, growth rate slows down. Here is another growth pattern observed by humans, allometric growth. Allometric growth is when there is an unequal growth rate in different parts of the body. Here is the graph to support allometric growth. You can see that the head seems to have a higher growth rate during infancy compared to other ages. Here is a picture of a baby and if we measure the size of the head against the rest of the body, the head is actually one third of the body. Compare that with yourself today. Our head is now about one seventh of the body, meaning that it is growing at a slower rate when you are an adult. Similarly, you can see the reproductive organs do not have a higher growth rate at the early stage of development. Only when you reach about 12 to 15 years old, the reproductive organ takes on a higher growth rate. So every organ and part of our human body develops at a different rate at different stages of our life. That is allometric growth. The opposite of allometric growth in humans is isometric growth in fish. From the word iso, you can predict that it shows an equal growth rate of different parts of the body. So when we plot a graph of the length of the part of the body over time, we get an almost straight line graph. To demonstrate, we can look at this picture of a fish when it was young and compare it to when it has grown into an adult. You can see that the ratio of the head, body and tail when it was young is equal to the ratio of the head, body and tail as an adult. We have completed our discussion on the three types of growth curves as well as the four different growth patterns. The balanced growth pattern that is intermittent growth in insects will be discussed in my next video together with the process of ecdesis and metamorphosis in insects. So until then, bye bye.